Recording. Hey everybody, it's Wednesday, July 10th, and you're here at the Chaos Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Working Group. We're really happy to see you all here. Hope everyone's doing well. I think everybody is doing okay. Uh, for those who are new, which is nobody on this call, but in case anybody is watching and curious, um, this is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct. So keep that in mind as you interact. Uh, if you have not read that, then you should, because as your participation um, kind of requires that you uh, adhere to that. So yeah, if you have not added your name and you want to share, uh, I must also a silence sleeper. Yeah, my mom has to have the TV on like super loud. And so like, it's so weird when I go to her house and she's like napping and it's like, you know, I go be bopping in like, hey, and it's when you so said cool. noise. I immediately thought of just like white noise. Oh, like, yeah. Not yeah. like TV noise. That's a definite no. I know. I don't I don't know. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> uh, OK, moving on. We have a lot on the agenda today. There's a lot to talk about because we've missed a couple of meetings recently. So, yeah. So for those who participated in the last meeting, uh, we did a community building definition session with Errol Fox, and it was super awesome. It was so great. So um, they are not able to come today, but they're going to come next week and we can continue because we just ran out of time. Quite frankly, we were just having such a good time with it. Um, here is the link to the Miro board that we, why wasn't this a link? I don't know, but um, that we were working from. And so, space at the end of it. Oh, maybe that, yeah, that's it. So basically we were um, going through some of the, oh, uh, okay, uh oh. Uh, oh yeah, you have to like right click. So we were going through some of the um, definitions of what we mean when we say community. That was really the goal of our, um, of our exercise. And so we all came up with different uh, stories that spoke to each of these terms. And then um, we kind of picked out the the recurring themes or like the the common words or or um, some some of the more important ones. Um, so then I think the next step is to take that and do something over here. But I don't know what that is. <laughs> so that's up to Errol. But um, yeah, it was really great. We had a, a very good time doing it. And um, for those who hadn't heard, um, Errol had been helping our uh, small DEI audit team from back in the day uh, kind of go through these exercises. And so I'm really happy that they were able to bring them to the larger group because it was just such a fun, um, fun exercise and we all enjoyed it. And I think it was beneficial for everybody. So if you want to look through and see what we were talking about, great. If you want to add some, great. I, I don't think that that's a problem at all. Uh, we didn't get to this part either. so. Um, I, I mean, it's not the same kind of doing it on your own as opposed to having a facilitator there, but um, you can kind of see the examples that we had had put here. And if you want to put something new, I think that's perfectly fine. We would just maybe want to indicate that those are new somehow. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know how to do that, but we can we can bring that up later, I guess. Elizabeth, do you have a sense of what the goal is? You know, like, where are we going with this? I, not not a not a criticism of anything just curious no i think it's so that we are clear in um what well what we mean by community but also um how we can make sure that we are like this piece i think and making sure that we are speaking to the people that um come to us and telling them why like why you would want to join chaos why you would want to join an open source community um, the things that that mean something to us and like our motivations and and these are the things also that we can we can grow within chaos, I think I think that's the point of this is that. Um, these are the things that have come uh, have floated to the surface right of, of things that are meaningful to the group and so. I think a making sure that we don't forget these things and fostering these things that we we. You know, the chaos community in particular cares about 
um, for one, and also like communicating that to others, like this is a community where we make a difference. This is a community where you're gonna learn something, you're gonna be part of something bigger. You know, all of those things to speak to new contributors that are coming in. I think I could be totally off base, I'm not sure. Okay, I, I, it's gonna be, it'll be interesting to see kind of where it lands because there are people who join our community for so many different reasons. And like when we talk about like target audience on that, if you like scrolled over. Yeah. Like I, it's like if somebody's like, who's the target audience for chaos? I'd be like, I don't know. Right. <laughs> and that's, that's the so thing. many people. Yeah, that's the thing. I think we're just trying to get some clarity around who are the people coming to chaos and why are they coming to chaos and um, why are they sticking around? You know, all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Sean, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, I was, uh, this kind of came up in the community meeting yesterday um, where we were talking about how so many people have this experience where chaos is their first open source thing and they they have a really positive experience and kind of learn uh, kind of, a, I guess, a optimized or a really inclusive way to participate in open source from engaging with the chaos project. And so I think this I don't, that's not our mission, but I think it's something that happens. And this kind of exercise seems like it would reinforce that culture or let us reflect on what about what we do makes that happen so that perhaps we could, in addition to metrics and things, we could also share some of this thing that we do that we don't really think about, but is part of us. Yeah, agreed. I agree with that, but then like I also think of like the conversation we had in the ISO call today, like Gary White's metric model is a candidate for like an ISO standard. So like the, and like Gary is not new to open source in this situation. Gary, if you're listening, hello, but, um, <laughs> but like, so that's a, it's a completely different, mm -hmm. different motivation there. And then I think about like the university working group mm -hmm. and anyway they're just so i yeah. agree with you that that is one audience that you had described but we have so many others as well right Agreed. and i think the, the distinction between the user community and the contributor community and sometimes those overlap like gary was a user who also became a contributor and now he's a leader in one of our working groups yeah. so he's also getting some of those benefits of being in a contributor community like the friendship and the meaningful work and things like that. Um, but also, I think some of these can speak to the user community. Some some don't want to really engage, which is totally fine. They just want to use the metrics and go on their merry way. Totally fine. I don't know if those are the folks we are considering in this exercise. Maybe. Um, I don't know. But yeah, I totally understand what you're saying, Matt. Like there is there is a difference. Like they are two completely separate communities. And I think that's also why I'm glad that the the board decided to kind of break those out into separate goals. You know, one was growing the user community, one was essentially growing the contributor community as well. So like you kind of approach them a little bit differently for sure. What other comments do we have on this? Well, it'll be interesting when Errol comes back to catch everybody up and continue the exercise and see if, <laughs> see if we were right, if that, that was the goal. I don't know. Maybe it's completely something different. <laughs> totally possible. I don't yeah. know. I just, did, I just did what I was told in the, in, the, in the exercise. I'm like, you want us to do this? I will do this. <laughs> when Errol's not here, we're just making it up. Just making it up. That's right. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, any other questions, comments, anything anybody wants to talk about? Okay, let's go on. So yesterday in the community meeting, we were talking about um, this new working group that kind of just evolved organically from some of our contributors and also some work that Chaos Africa folks did with um, a, another group in Africa working towards disability and accessibility, improving lives of others, bringing them into open source um, called Project Enable. And that we talked about that a couple weeks ago. Um, 
so they had this partnership with them and then uh, this group just kind of stuck around and, and wanted to keep going with the work so um, there's they've created a um, slack channel we're going to put some meetings on the calendar I wasn't sure neither of these folks are here uh, who our chairs and co chairs are I think it's Victoria and Brian but I'll let someone I don't know Eddie and Hamza do you know the answer to that by chance if they are uh, kind of considering themselves chairs and co-chairs of this group? So I am not sure about Brian, but I think um, Victoria is really passionate about this project. Um, it's more likely that she's going to take up um, that role as a well. Okay, so we'll we'll put Victoria and we'll just kind of put Brian in. Um, so they had their first meeting, I think, yesterday, uh, uh, Monday, and um, so they talked about some of the goals, uh, what they're wanting to accomplish with this group. Uh, one thing that did pop up, um, so Victoria and Yiga had been doing an accessibility audit on our website. There's a spreadsheet of all of the things, <laughs> all of the things, and I think there's a lot of tweaks that we need to make on our website. Um, the challenge is that the website obviously is in WordPress, as you probably all know, and so some of these tweaks are buried in the theme. Uh, for instance, I think there's some contrast issues with the the theme, you know, having like a gray font as opposed to a black font on white. Uh, just just for as an example, uh, that's one. And so I think there's going to be some custom CSS that we have to put in here to address some of these things. I'm not that person to, to do that. So I think that's kind of the challenge for us right now is finding folks who know WordPress also can have the time to kind of work on this and improve our accessibility a little bit. So that's kind of where we are. Um, it's gonna be a discussion that we have and I think it's a pretty big project because I think there are quite a few tweaks. Even though our theme that we chose promoted themselves as being completely in accordance with the the um, current standards. I don't know that that's actually the case now. Maybe that was back before. I don't know. I don't know. But they were able to find some things that we can tweak it to make it better. So there you have it. Yeah, so I, I would like to say that um, I think it's something that we should bring to Chaos Africa Sync meeting because uh, most developers usually attend that meeting than the community meeting, although they should. But then if we, there is a chance that we will be able to see someone who can work with WordPress and custom CSS in that meeting. So what I'm going to do is to put that in the agenda for the um, Chaos Africa meeting tomorrow. That would be great. That would be excellent. And if we do have somebody that's interested in working on this, um, I can help them poke around our website because um, it is it is older and has been altered and modded to our specifications and things. So we have like some custom plugins and things like that. So it's it's a little um, yeah <laughs> as as you know it's evolved. We'll just say that it's evolved, and so there are some some some. Uh, I don't even know why, what what you would call it, but some things that you might want to know before you start poking around the the actual code. But that would be amazing, Eddie and I would really appreciate that. Okay, no problem. Could we just redo the whole website? I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm definitely not opposed to that. I I like the the only thing that I appreciate the most about the website now is the ability to do stuff in GitHub and have it pull into the website. So, yeah, I agree. I like that. Yes, agreed. And there's no other way to do that other than how we're currently set up. No idea. I mean, I guess <laughs> GitHub Pages would let you do that, like, but I don't know. Would probably be the only other one. Yeah, I mean, out. yeah, the website is pretty <clears throat> big. You know, we have a lot of documents, all the metrics, all of our documents, all the stuff about events. Like, there's there's a lot in our website. Um, so I, I'm not sure what the limitations are of something like a GitHub pages or if it can be set up like a CMS where we can also have blog posts and things like that going through and newsletters. I don't know, but I'm with you. I'm a big fan of having like 
the ability for people just to issue PRs against content. Like that makes a ton of sense or structure. But I also understand how it's set up. Like those PRs, they like hit a limit and then then there's stuff that needs to be done internal with WordPress. So. Yeah, yeah. You got to set up like the the skeleton and then you can pop in the content on the skeleton. But I see Eddie Inca has her hand up. Yes, please. So I wanted to ask that apart from the accessibility audit, are there any other issues with the chaos website or the WordPress that you want developers to look into? I know there has been um, the only the only thing outstanding right now. There are two things outstanding that come to mind aside from like updating the timeline graphic and things like that. Uh, the footer is a thing right now, not a big deal. That's just um, something we need to sort out because there's a disconnect between what the footer says now and what our content is, because our content's in GitHub. So it's like, like one license and the other is like it's mentioned on, doesn't matter. The other thing is um, the, the way that the content is shown is too wide. And so we've been asked to make it a little bit more narrow to make it more readable. Um, a few people have brought this up. So that's kind of in the works. I think, I'm not sure if Kevin was working on that. I think he said he would. I couldn't figure out how to do it in the theme. I think it's again, wanna be, gonna be a custom CSS. It's not something that's um, customizable through the, just the regular theme interface, the settings. So that was where my limit is. <laughs> If I can change it in a setting, I'm great. If I have to do anything past that, forget it. Um, yeah. So I would say those okay. are the things. So there are some design issues with it. And you know, again, we've also talked about making the making the metrics and metric models a little easier to navigate through. Uh, I know Matt's got some thoughts on that or has had thoughts in the past about that, aside from just having them be searchable and they're in topics and categories. So I don't know. All right, please could you help me put it in the doc so I can refer to it when I'm speaking with the developer? Yeah. Um, no. Okay. Um, oops. What else did I say? Was that about it? Uh, oh. What is happening? What? Why? Why? I don't understand. It's it. How does, how does stuff work? It's making me itchy. Okay. There you go. No, stop. Wait. Hey, Deb, stop. Right. Fix it. <laughs> Are you going to fix it, Matt? No, you fix it. I'm going to watch you fix it. I'm going to have to go up here now and do some tab things. <laughs> See, why? Why? I don't understand. Nope. I made it worse. I did make it worse, but <laughs> I figured out. I thought, oh my God, oh my God, I hate this. Oh, yay. Okay, here we go. I don't even remember what I was going to put in here. Design uh, for um, usability of metrics and metrics models. I would say more discoverability. So that's two, we can add more as we think about it. But yeah, that would be great. And um, Adyinka, we can also, because we used to have website meetings, which we don't anymore. Um, we, can, we can restart those if we need to, if this because this sounds like it's gonna be, I mean, if we are considering switching to a whole new thing, uh, that's gonna be a big process and a lot of work. So uh, yeah. Okay, no problem. So I will reach out to you in the DM so that we can uh, make this clearer. Yeah, that would be great. We can we can have that conversation in the website Slack. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, I want to make sure Kevin knows that we are talking about this because I know he has thoughts on website stuff too. So. Okay. Okay. Any other? issues or things to talk about with this 
Uh, how is this gonna like stay in sync with this meeting here? Because a lot of the discussion seems like it would be DEI related. True, true. Um, I feel like maybe we can reach out to Victoria to maybe have some commitment to come back here and okay. provide updates. Um, yeah. I feel like Brian was doing that for a while. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's just put that in here. Um, let's make sure we are keeping that work in sync with this meeting. Yeah. I am I imagine once it's kind of stable and rolling, we can probably fold a lot of those conversations into this meeting. Yeah, that'd be good. We, we did the bad. Yeah. The fewer meetings, the better. And the more we can just bring people to one spot, the better. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Okay, let's go ahead and go on. We do have a couple of other things to talk about. Um, yesterday, again, we talked about in the community meeting, we talked about this community contributions.md file, which we is a file that exists. I didn't link it here, but uh, it's a file that exists in our GitHub repo in the community. Uh, in our GitHub org in the community repo, where we are tracking folks that have contributions that don't show up in PRs or in GitHub anywhere. So things like design, things like facilitating meetings, helping newcomers, whatever that might be. Uh, we have, I think the last one that was in there was from May, and we have mostly just a handful of folks who are using it. So I wanted to bring it to the community to see if this is like, where is, where's the breakdown is it our process is it too hard is it you know that people just forget is it you know just they don't know how to even submit a pr um so we after the discussion we kind of decided that the process was probably okay for now that we could do a better job of reminding folks to submit their their contributions um and then maybe do some education on how to submit a pr um pointing people to the newcomers call that making the newcomers call more of like if you're new to chaos or and or new to open source and you have questions about open source, you can also come here and we can work work through that with you all. So that's kind of where we landed yesterday. Um, I don't know what, uh, but I wanted to bring it to this group to continue the conversation also kind of see what you all thought. Are people submitting to it? Not since like May. Um, I can, I should have linked it here it's in our it's in our community repo Ooh. oh i deleted that repo I'm okay <laughs> cool all my work is done yay <laughs> um so um you know it was there was like a little bit of a flurry i think whatever we would submit um some reminders we would get another little grouping of folks but um yeah it has it has been just a few folks really submitting and so i just wanted to bring it back up again i mean I, just from the lightest weight perspective maybe just like a once a month ping on the general channel in slack you know yeah we could certainly do that uh let's see here um We also um, talked about, or an idea was brought up yesterday about um, in the community meeting, having just like a reminders section, because we often have reminders of upcoming CFPs, other things that we're reminding people of, can cancellations, whatever. And so like we could just kind of pop it in there. And also maybe just encouraging folks in like leaders of other working groups if you see if you see somebody doing something great like encourage them or remind them that that's a thing that they can get credit for. Uh, 
There's the link if you want to. Yeah, just maybe just highlight what I'm typing. Just put it in the app. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just put it in this. Something like that. Yeah. You can just copy and paste that into general. <laughs> just yeah. I think Slackbot, this this built in Slackbot will let you do that to set up a you can one like schedule like on the second of the month. Just yep. okay, just do that then. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. Oh, I see there's a chat. Okay. Um yeah. Let's add something here. Someone just reminded me of um, yes. Yes to your answer or your question. <laughs> the person who just pinged me. Um, uh, oh. Yes, I'll just, oh yeah, I'll let you bring it up. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Any other questions with this? Um, or, or concerns with this process, doc? Anything? Yeah, I just, I mean, it's like anything. It's nice to recognize people. Um, and if people are contributing to it, that's great. Um, but if they're not, then we <laughs> would rethink even having it. But yeah. Yeah, I think we want to give it a little more time. Yeah, I don't think we're in that spot either. It's, just, it's such a hard problem to solve. Yeah. And I don't think anybody's really figured it out yet. <laughs> so it would be great if we could get we could get that to work. It'd be amazing. But agreed. Yeah. Okay. The next is it okay if we go on? Is that all right with everybody? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So the recent, uh, I just wanted to bring attention, I don't do a great job of promoting chaos casts in the meetings, and I'd like to fix that. Um, this is one we recorded recently, just celebrating two years of Chaos Africa. It was a super, super fun podcast to record. We had a blast doing that. And uh, so if you haven't listened to it, you should, because it's really fun. And it's, I think, one of the shorter ones, maybe. So it's not terrible. Um, a terrible. <laughs> See, that, like it's a bad thing. Um, yeah, but it's it was really fun. So you should listen to it if you haven't. I uh, wanted to remind everybody that if you do have ideas for episodes, you can email this uh, this email address and it will go to the, the podcast team and then Alice will take that and run with it. Um, this is also something new. So Alice posted in the Chaos Africa, I think it was Chaos Africa channel um, about doing um, more highlights of things that are happening within Chaos Africa specifically. And so Harmony spoke up and said that he would like to help kind of organize that, host those, um, be more active in, in basically coordinating them, which is fantastic. So there is kind of that effort going on. Um, I think there might even be some, uh, I, don't, I don't actually know, it's super new. So I don't know if there's gonna be like redesign or anything like that of the, the podcast page or anything, but um, yeah, I just wanna let you all know that that's a thing that people are, that Harmony is, is going to start um, branching out with our, with our chaos cast. That's great. Yeah, so much work is going on in, in chaos Africa. Um, it's just really fantastic to be able to highlight all of the work and the folks who are doing the work. So that'd be great. I do think we'll be doing, it sounds like we'll be doing a badging podcast at some point. Yeah. Um, yeah, we should add that on here. That is Alice is scheduling that. Is that right? I think Alice, is on. Alice knows that. Yeah. So that is also in the works is for badging. Um, the uh, any questions? Any other questions? Sorry. No, all good. Okay. Um, the code of conduct team, Anita, provided another update uh, from them yesterday. I just wanted to, again, bring it here. I wasn't sure if Anita would be here today. I didn't see her, but um, uh, this was these are the two documents that they have drafted, and they were looking for some feedback from the community. 
these are not final. These are going to be circulated through other meetings as well, but um, they are here and I want to obviously this is appropriate to bring here. Uh, so this is the their incident response plan. So this is going to be a public facing doc, um, but obviously the <laughs> obviously the incident reports aren't going to be public, but this doc is so that everyone knows we're all on the same page of what happens when an incident is reported. Um, so if you have a minute and you want to flip through this and provide some feedback, that would be great. So this is again what happens when someone what happens internally at chaos when someone does file a report. Which i'm really happy that this is a thing it's all documented it's very clear it's very transparent and very. Um, what's the word I want. I don't know, but it's. I think it just um, reinforces the idea or reinforces the culture of yes, we will take these things seriously here's exactly what's going to happen internally. Like it's just very transparent and um, really great. This is great. Where would you think about putting this on the website to make sure that people have access to it easily? That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that right now. I would imagine that it could go. Uh, oh, I mean, like, code of conduct and like. Yeah. And That's yeah. I would probably link link it somewhere um it's at the top like make... enforcement yeah or at the top mm -hmm. like i would probably put the process by which somebody could report something right at the top yeah agreed agreed um and there also is Yes, yeah, so there's this one that happens internally and then they also have drafted this procedure like how you do it, which is very detailed and very clear. And what happens to the report data, these things, I think it's just fantastic. Pretty much covers everything, I think. Sorry, Matt. One, no, it's okay. In the other one you were showing, it looked like there were still some open comments. Are there yeah just those yeah okay so yeah kind of like some to do's merry blessings on this call too so merry blessing do you have anything to add to any of this um not that you've already mentioned um like i said we're just going to take this through a few other meetings and um finalize on it and we're going to push it back to the I mean maybe I think you so that you can help us update on the website as well yeah yeah happy to do that Mary Blessing did you talk about with your group like where this how these documents could be made available yeah um it's going to be linked um to the to the website right I'm going to be linking it to the website, um, um, the, the code of right? uh, but really finalize that. I should really bring that up um, in our next um, call. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Can, you mute? <laughs> Can you mute? Oh, sorry. That's okay. No worries. I thought I was thought I was just grabbing something from the other side of the room. I didn't realize the zipper would make a sound all the way over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> sorry about that. No worries. Um, okay. So we have one more thing to talk about, which Mary Blessing and I were talking about this morning. So um how do we want to say this leader meeting? Uh, Mary Blessing, why don't you talk about it? This was really your idea. 
Oh, <laughs> all right. Um, thank you, Elizabeth. So, um, what myself and Elizabeth were discussing uh, is around having um, twice a year meeting with leaders and maintainers within the chaos project. Um, the the goal, um, I, I like I envision the meeting to address things around you know first of all checking in on these leaders, um, because personally I just feel like. A lot of leaders in open source projects are probably being neglected, like because they are leaders, they are left with the responsibility of taking care of others and the project or sub project they are managing or handling within that community. So, you know, this call would help check in with them, then also, um, you know, ask them about progress on the sub project they are handling within the community. And lastly, just, you know, Ask them how they are feeling about, you know, continuing um, leading, you know, um, that aspect of the project or being a maintainer for that aspect of the project, right? Um, and and I was I was suggesting that because I think it would help us not lose sight of um, when leaders are burnt out and maybe they are just um, very shy to share, and also when someone has lost interest in the project, you know, we can easily um, catch that and, you know, have a seamless, um, um, is it handover process to maybe someone else that would be leading that, that particular um, working group or sub project within the community. So, so uh, I don't yeah. know if anyone has, does, does yeah. it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. This is, this is great. Um, I had a couple of thoughts. My, when you were talking, like the first would be how do we, we identify leaders, but I'm thinking that maybe it could just be simply an opt in if you feel like you're, you know, leading things in the chaos project, you're welcome to attend. Because that would be terrible if like we tried to select leaders and then we left a person out and they'd be like, thanks, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> is doing all this work and which you know you know so i maybe an opt-in approach would be really good and then um i also thought maybe for this we could think about hiring somebody who would actually run say like a half day session about how we talk about i just put strategic visioning in there but like not only like making sure that people feel that they're being supported in the project, but it would also be interesting to me to understand like where the different leaders in the project think they're leading things towards, <laughs> you know, like if, if one group is kind of going one direction and one group is kind of going a different direction, it might be interesting to know that, not that it's bad, but so that is a really good idea. Yeah, um, I, I think when, when I initially joined Chaos, uh, when I was really um, looking around for us to learn more about Chaos, I, I can't remember, but I remember stumbling on a particular document that has details of leaders within the project, say, for instance, Adenka and Enoch handles the budget project. Um, if you wanted to know more about Grimola, for instance, you could go to Georg, uh, right? You wanted to um, know more about the Chaos Africa chapter, you meet Ruth, um, you know, stuff like that. There was this document, I can't, I can't recall, but maybe that, that would really need updates, right? We need to be updated and we can easily, you know, um, identify leaders and maintainers within the project from that. That is actually very timely because um, Precious O and myself have been working on just that document, my blessing that you're talking about, identifying all the chairs and co-chairs of all the working groups. And um, yeah, so, but I also, I also uh, agree with Matt that there might be unofficial leaders in the, in the group, I think that, um, you know, are, uh, maybe not documented, but uh, do consider themselves leaders within the group or maybe formerly, you know, I don't know. I, th I think we, maybe we could do it on opt-in just to make sure. Yeah, it's just like 
Vivia and the work she's doing with the ISO standards. And yeah. But she might, that may not have been documented in a document yet. Yeah, it's not. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah, I would just echo what you and Matt are both saying that I think if the leader meeting is inclusive, it lets people self select. And that sends the right message. If otherwise, it's going to come off like a sort of a elite group creation process that kind of doesn't work in our community, in my opinion. Yeah, I just thought this was a fantastic idea. I, I'm so in love with this idea. <laughs> so thank you, Mary Blessing, for, for having it and <laughs> for, for um, bringing it up. Do we, do we think two times a year is appropriate? Is that about right? Do we need more? Do we need less? Is that okay? Maybe we could just start with like trying to get one off the ground and just see how it goes. Yeah, I love it. And how it goes means just the cadence, not to not have it or have it. I'm just thinking. Yeah, um, I think Mary Blessing also was hoping that the the current community management team, that basically the folks who are in that Slack channel, um, would also help coordinate those and make them happen. If if we decide to do you know often, however often. If we just hired somebody. Sorry. If we just hired somebody. I mean, I think that's an option too. <laughs> well, just sure. just um, coordinating that stuff can be tricky, and I don't know. I mean, if just to help people do less work. <laughs> yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, yeah, maybe we can we can flesh that out a little more and see what what that would be. If it's just one meeting, then it might not be too bad, but. Um, yeah, I think it would be interesting to have a, a facilitator help us go through the process of, um, you know, that could be very cool. Okay, cool. We have four minutes left. What do we do? Is there anything left? Later. <laughs> All right. You get your four Peace out. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Yay. See you later. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Bye.